All right. Stop fucking with your camera. We're on. <laughs> um, where's my list? What's up, everyone? We're back. We're back to piss you off or fucking have you saying hallelujah, one or the other, because I think that's what we do. So I think one of the more newsworthy topics since our last uh, drop was this big Hunter Biden story about this mysterious laptop that just happened to get dropped off and never picked up. Um, do you know much about this story? No, I don't. Oh, you haven't heard about this? Like, yeah, I mean, I, it's I haven't been it, really following it. Oh, it's a big story, dude. Like, the New York Post um, dropped this. And supposedly it has all types of damning evidence about Hunter Biden and his business practices or whatever in the Ukraine. And so the story goes that he, this, this uh, tech shop owner, they, they dropped off multiple laptops, I guess, or whatever. And, and um, never claimed one of them or never came to pick back, pick up one of them. So supposedly this guy, reached out to different people. Uh, it's been so long that I guess he, I guess he decided to look on the computer, which is, eh, I, I, kind of suspect, but um, in any case, supposedly it had a, a Bo Biden foundation sticker on, on it. Um, and I guess he reached out. I, I don't know the specifics of who he reached out to, um, but he reached out to, I guess, the FBI and, and others to try to uh, offer this laptop up. Um, I will say he is a Trump supporter. It ended up in Rudy Giuliani's hands. Fox News wouldn't touch it because they couldn't verify the sources on the emails. And supposedly the emails are not even the authentic emails. They're pictures of emails. Rudy Giuliani was in the Ukraine, what, the end of last year, looking for dirt. Drops two and a half weeks before the election. Now, listen, I, I'm not, yes, most of that makes it sound suspect as a motherfucker. And uh, from the Ukraine, which the Russians are, have already been proven by our intelligence agency, not Trump, don't listen to Trump, listen to our fucking people who are paid to uh, hash out these things and find stuff out. The Russians were interfering in our, in our elections, and they're trying to do so again. But if you believe this stuff, and and listen, I'm not here to say that maybe there's a possibility that there are some real shit. However, I will say how much of the real shit is actually really incriminating or really real. That's where I question things. So there, there could possibly be stuff on this laptop. This laptop could have been left in the Ukraine and maybe that's where they got it from. But they probably could have doctored some shit. Like they have hackers up the ass. Um, people know how to use Photoshop. If, if, if the, the, if they're not actual emails and they're pictures of emails, I, I don't know, whatever. The point is, this is coming from Giuliani and Steve Bannon, who are way far right wackos 
And Steve Bannon, let's not forget, he's being um, he he's been charged of crimes. Um, believe what you want. There could be some valid stuff in there. I'm not saying there isn't because I don't want to turn a blind eye to shit. But it does seem kind of suspect. Yeah, I mean, just listening in it, listening, listening to like your outline of it, definitely like leads me to question the validity. Well, not only that, but Twitter actually, which I think is kind of wrong. I don't think they should be doing this. They blocked people from uh, accessing the link, which is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. If anything, they should have did what Facebook does and says, um, you know, like this hasn't been verified. Or, yeah, like this, this hasn't been verified. Um, oh, by the way, by the way, this story, none of supposedly the people that worked at the post, the, the none of the reporters wanted to put their byline, which is their name. They didn't want to put their name on the story. So the post put the name on a person who I guess didn't even know her name was going to go on the story. And she is a, she comes out of Fox news and she's down with all of those guys like Ben and, and all of them. So it leads it to maybe stink a little bit more, but whatever. Like I said, I'm not saying one way or the other, there could be some, you could say where there's smoke, there's fire. Maybe. Maybe, but if Fox News wouldn't touch it, see, that's the biggest thing to me. Fox News, as right as they are, and as crazy as they are these days with with fucking um, Tucker Carlson and 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 the other asshole Hannity and fucking Ingraham, like. They are so far right, and none of them would touch it without, like, legit sourcing or or verification. Kind of, that's the biggest thing that makes me question this 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 story and how valid it is. So, oh, and 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 I gotta mention, like, I understand people are fucking tired of here. This was supposed to be a goddamn pop comedy podcast. We're talking about politics all the time. It's an election year. These are unprecedented times with the pandemic and and we probably have the the most uh, inept president ever in the history of this country. And so yeah, that's why we talk about this heavy shit because we we have to uh, put a timestamp on this. We have to say, this was going on back then so that when we look back, we say, holy shit, we lived through that? Fuck. How the fuck did we make it through that bullshit? Fucking pandemic and and, and the orange asshole denier. So that, that leads me into um, his recent attacks on Fauci. I guess Fauci went on 60 Minutes and basically said, like, like, I, like, yeah, it concerned me. Like, like they asked him, what were, you know, did it surprise you that the, the president caught the vid? It's like, no, it didn't surprise me. He's like, I was concerned about it the whole time. And when I saw the, 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 what happened, he's like, it, it made sense. And it turned into a super spreader event. Now, mind you, this fucking guy, has worked for presidents on both sides, okay? He's working for a Republican president. He worked for a Democratic president. He worked for a pub Republican president before that. This guy said, I don't want to endorse anybody. Take me out of your fucking ad, Trump. Don't try to play me with this bullshit ad where you try to you know, make it seem like I'm talking about you when I'm talking about the team the pandemic team and you take my shit out of context. I don't want to be a part of that. So, so Fauci 
just for telling the truth, a guy who studies this shit, a guy who, who like, this is network. his bag. It's like, like all you idiot uh, deniers out there. If you're a carpenter, you know how to hammer nails. You know how to put things together. That's your bag. That's what you know how to do. If you're a welder, that's your shit. You know how to fucking weld pieces of metal together. This guy knows about uh, diseases, infectious diseases. This is what he studied, you fucking morons. This poor son of a bitch not only gets death threats for telling people you should wear masks and you should social distance. He's never said like anything really crazy. He's just like, like this is, he's getting death threats. His fucking wife and his kids are being harassed to the point where he has to have security because of these assholes that are out there. Because Trump goes on TV and calls him an idiot at his little stupid rallies. <laughs> it's yeah, like I mean, I'm speechless. Yeah, I mean, he's he's another victim of Trump's, uh, I guess, propaganda plan. Um, I mean, he discredited someone who was supposed like was part of his team and supposed to be one of the leading, you know, medical guys who's been there for years. And because he doesn't agree with him, because he won't fit his rhetoric, he wants to get him out. Like he he wants to fire him, calls him, you know, all these names, and then six his extremists against him. Speaking of extremists, did did you hear about this fucking guy that like I forget what state it was? He's like a former. Um, we already talked about the 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 plot to kidnap the governor of, of Michigan and all of that stuff. Well, Some... you know, they they also like planned to uh, kidnap the governor of Virginia. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know so, that. Yeah, that. That did come out that because he was, you know, you know, he's a medical doctor and his recommendations were right up there. Um, they, he was one of the targets. Well, Apparently, some asshole ex-firefighter or something in one of these states or one of these cities was planning on doing something similar to the mayor of that city. And I think they got him, too, because he was planning on doing the same thing just because the mayor had the audacity to have a mask mandate. What the fuck? What the- I've been trying to figure this out for months. And and it's I I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I've worn masks numerous times. I I I I flew to Chicago. I wore a mask the whole way. Two flights. It wasn't a direct flight. Uh, so I was in the airport, you know, took me hours to get there. When I got there, I went straight to the hospital and I wore a mask the whole time I was at the hospital. Now, granted, I'm not working. And I understand that when you're working, it can be more of a, a, you know, a nuisance. So maybe you you try to find the most comfortable thing. And mind you, uh, it, it's not just masks like the like the, the there's other face coverings that are accepted. Whatever's most comfortable for you, you know, is is pretty much accepted anywhere. So why is this still a fucking big deal after all this time, after all we've been dealing with this? Why? Why to the point where people want to fucking kidnap and murder mayors? What the fuck are we doing? It's a fucking face covering. It doesn't even have to be a mask. Jesus Christ. 
Well, and I can tell you firsthand, man, like, I deal with this shit five nights a week. Like, the arguments over the mask and, you know, like, the, I'll tell you, like, if you argue with a store owner or with, like, a restaurant employee about a mask policy that, like, is in place or whatever, you're a fucking asshole. Straight up. You're a fucking asshole. Like, you deserve to have the vid. Like, here's the deal. Like, you're putting these people, these employees, like, in a position where they're enforcing the law. Like, number one, they don't have control over it. Like, this has been decided by people above them. Number two, like, you got to think these people have to abide by this rule, you know, much longer than the time that you're there. Like, you stop at a gas station, you got to put a mask on to walk in. It's a two-minute visit. You got to wear a mask for two fucking minutes. You go to a restaurant, you get some dinner, you have to wear a mask so you get to the table and get your food and shit. It's four minutes and whatever. Like, you got employees in restaurants or in, in these gas stations or whatever that are working eight, ten hour shifts that have to wear this mask for eight to ten hours. Yeah. And you got the audacity to be fucking salty or be a prick about it? Man, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. And 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 half of them, and, and I, I know this from experience, are wearing it improperly. Like I'm on the plane, I look over and I see these these chicks like next to me in the next aisle over, both of them their schnozzes are hanging out. Like, you stupid idiots. <sighs> Anyways, um we already talked about mass a million times. So but it, it and and there was another video of some chicken in the UK. Basically, they were kicking her off because she refused to wear a mask. And she said, she was like, oh, everybody's going to die. You know, like, it's part of life. You People die. And, and then she coughed all over him. Yeah. Which to me is like, okay, yeah, everybody's going to die. But um, so if I need to cross the street. And there's red lights on a kind of a freeway. Should I just run across and just take my chances? Because everybody's going to die. Like, it's just stupid. The mentality is just fucking ridiculous. But since we're well, talking. And, and, well, yeah, and the ahead. other thing is responsive. It's responsibility. Like, it's one thing to like, if, if it only affected you, if your decision not to wear a mask only affected you, then. I might support you. I might support you. Yeah. I might say, you know what? Absolutely. It's cool. Whatever. Fuck off. Like, that's your choice. Dude, I wish but it was decision. that way. I yeah. wish it was the opposite way. I wish it was that way. Because then we, yeah. we wouldn't have a problem. You don't want to wear a mask? You want to catch the vid? Fuck off. Fuck off. Go for it. Catch that motherfucker. I'll mask the fuck up. You go suck in all those fucking vapors. But unfortunately, it's the opposite. <laughs> no. I'm with you 100%. So speaking of mass, um, this this genius, this genius doctor, Doctor Atlas, uh, who is like Trump's new pandemic uh, specialist who is for whatever reason on the the task force, the COVID task force at the White House, this asshole tweeted like, like masks are useless this weekend to, to the point where Twitter had to take it down. Because this is coming from the White House task force. Dr. Burks wants this guy off the team because of his, his, his ridiculous statements. This guy isn't even a, a, a disease specialist. He, he has, he, he's like a radiologist, like he's neuro radiology or some shit like that. He has nothing to do with this type of stuff. And he's in Trump's ear. Because he tells him what, what he wants to hear versus what Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci tell him. It's fucking bananas. It's bananas. But I mean, what do you expect? Like, the, he, he won't listen to science on climate change. 
he's not going to listen to the science on climate change. Why would he listen to professionals, you know, about COVID? There's a much more immediate uh, results with COVID than there is with climate change. Climate change is happening gradually. COVID is every fucking day people are dying. And like we talked about, all those red states in the middle of the country where the COVID was eventually going to get there because they said, let's keep everything open and let's keep everything free and fucking let's all drink beers and jerk off each other's dicks. Like, it's there. It's there. And their the hospitals are starting to be at capacity and they're starting to experience what everyone else have all, already experienced. But they had the knowledge. This is the difference. We didn't know these things when it hit all the other states, the democratic states. We didn't know what we needed to do. We fucking been knowing it. And these assholes just looked the other way and said, let's just keep everything open and just fucking fuck COVID. And now look what's happening. We got a huge wave. Yeah. And, and there's a research like in States that when numbers were down, that it's coming back facing a second, like we're facing a second shutdown. Like if this shit gets out of hand, that's what's going to happen. You know, and, and, the economy is already in crisis. People are already struggling. And and this asshole, this Dr. Atlas, I don't want to let him off this quickly because he's a fucking asshole. This fucking cunt, if, if he has somewhat varying opinions versus what the other doctors are saying, that's fine. I think that's... that's um, I think that that that's helpful because you sometimes need somebody to think outside the box. But you can't you can't say something without substantiating it. And unless like he can back up saying that and saying, "Hey, you know what? Look, these masks don't fucking work. Like, I don't know why we got you guys doing this. Here's the studies to prove this." Well, then he's just preparing people to get sick and spread this virus and make things worse than it is. Absolutely. Like, and, and, and he's like trying erring on the side of caution is like the right way to handle things. Exactly. That's what most health people that, that deal with this stuff say, if not like 99% of them. And he's also talking about herd immunity and all of that bullshit. Well, that didn't work to work out too well for Sweden. Um, and so this guy's a fucking asshole. Dr. Atlas, I hope he catches COVID. I wouldn't mind if he didn't recover from it. I'm not, I'm not wishing him death, but I wouldn't blink twice if he didn't get the treatment Trump got. Even Chris Christie. Chris Christie was like, uh, take this shit seriously. Like... I was in the hospital for a fucking week and and you bet your ass Chris Christie got the the best fucking care that that was available. So he got his little COVID cocktail the same way Trump got it. And this this is the point. If you can afford that shit or if the taxpayers are paying for your COVID cocktail, you cunt. You fucking orange cunt. Then yeah, you you have a, a pretty good chance of, of recovering if you have fucking 12 doctors or whatever the fuck he had looking over him where most normal people can barely get one doctor to uh, check on them, you know, enough to where they can survive. And, and additionally, this narrative that it only, like the her, whole Atlas herd immunity thing was, oh yeah, we'll, we'll just like, We'll, we'll let everybody get it, but we'll protect like the old people. You stupid fucking assholes. It doesn't just affect old people. 
There are plenty of young people who have died from this. Case in point, Dmitry Stuzhuk, Ukrainian uh, influencer, fitness influencer. Guy looked about as fit as can be. Good looking guy. It's a fucking sad case. COVID denier. It's a fucking COVID denier. Got COVID, died at the age of 33 years old. 33! That's not old. We do herd immunity. How many, like, not even middle-aged people are going to die? And this guy didn't really, as far as I know from from everything I've read, he didn't have any pre-existing conditions. Yeah, I mean, dude, my my next-door neighbor is still battling with COVID. Um, She actually just got hospitalized again. Um, This girl's in her 20s, man. Like, to the point where, like, she's walking with a walker. Like, can barely breathe, can barely function. Like, shit is real. Like, yes, some people have mild cases and it doesn't affect them. But it is a very real and very vicious virus for some people. And if you have any, like, form of fucking humanity, like, you would understand that. Maybe it's not going to affect you that way. Maybe you'll be perfectly fine. But can you live with on your conscience, like, being the reason or being the cause of someone you care about, someone you love getting sick. Can yeah, you live I, with that on yeah, your conscience? Like we we've talked about this to, to like to the point where I, I just want to jab a fucking fork in my fucking eyeballs. We get that. What 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 I don't get is how this White House, this administration, fucking Lindsey Lindsey Graham said he hasn't been to the White House in forever, or or was it McConnell? I don't know. It was one of those two assholes said he hasn't been to the White House in like months because he he wasn't down with how they were fucking dealing with it. Like this asshole is out there saying, "Oh, CNN, all they want to do at his stupid rallies where people are not wearing masks." He's out there and, and, and say, oh, all CN, CNN wants to talk about is COVID, 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 COVID. Well, you stupid asshole. It's because it's killing so many fucking people. It's because it has so many people. Eight million people went into poverty since what, June or July. Eight million fucking people have crossed over into poverty. And this asshole is up there acting like like covid's not it's not a big deal it's going to go away don't worry about it just vote for me we'll, we'll fucking we'll, the economy's great like what the fuck planet is this asshole living on in the meantime 45,000 airline workers are getting laid off you know fucking <laughs> people are getting removed from their homes because uh, the eviction moratoriums are fucking gone like utility companies are shutting people's shit off because they're not giving them a break anymore. God damn it. Which, you know, not to fucking be a dead horse in the head, but the fact that these fucking cock fucks can't fucking come up with a plan that they can agree upon as far as stimulus to fucking support the American people is fucking bullshit. Well, it's on both sides, I, I blame yeah. I I blame Pelosi and the Democrats just as much as I blame. Oh, uh, absolutely. However, however, I will say, uh, the Senate need to get their shit together. The Republican-controlled Senate, when originally they said they'll go with whatever the White House wants to to whatever deal the White House like Mnuchin makes with Pelosi, they'll go along with. Now, now, all of a sudden, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Now it's like, oh, no, 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 let's put this bill out there. And you know what their bill is? They have their little skinny bill that's like way, way, not way not enough. The $500 billion skinny bill when, when, 
The, the White House is offering $1.9 trillion now. Pelosi was asking for 2.2. The White House has now gone up to 1.9 trillion. And the Senate Republicans are offering a $500 billion deal. To which their main, uh, I guess, uh, stimulus is for our small businesses. Yeah. What about everybody else? Everybody else doesn't have a fucking business. Well, and here's what cracks me up. So, the, so the bill is to bail out airlines and to bail out small businesses. But here's here's what cracks me up about that. Like, hey guys, here's some common sense for you. If the American consumer can't afford to spend money, then guess what? You can give all those small businesses all the fucking money in the world, you dumb fucks. They're going to fucking go out of business. They're not going to be able to survive because yeah. the American consumer is not going to be there to buy shit. Yep. Yep. Spot on. Spot. I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, the first stimulus proved that by helping the American people, they spent the money. They didn't fucking hoard it away. They spent the money. They put the money back in the economy. And as a result, the economy is like was doing okay. Like through the pandemic, the economy, the economy was doing okay. Well, I, I think they're measuring, um, you know, the market more than they are uh, like what regular people actually have. So, okay, the stock market is doing okay because all the big companies still have money because all the big companies are like like Amazon and shit and, and stuff that people still need, right? So all the big uh, food producing plants, all like all of that shit, people still need that. So people are still going to spend their money on that. They don't have a choice, right? But we're not talking about stock markets, you stupid assholes. We're talking about people who have spent all their savings and they don't have anything left. We're talking about people who are, are, are applying for jobs because the little chump change they get from unemployment is not nearly enough. And they can't get jobs because the competition is, even for simple jobs, what? A thousand to one, five thousand to one. I don't know. It depends on where you live, I guess. But like, it doesn't take a genius to figure this stuff out. Like, you guys are failing America. You're failing the people who put you into this, into these positions. And you don't give a fuck because you have money. So. Like we've said from the start, if you see these assholes doing nothing for you and they've just been coasting along, they get these Senate positions and they coast along for year after year after year after year because you assholes don't get off your asses and go out and vote. Get the fuck up and go out and vote. It's that simple. Vote their asses out. They're not looking out for you, you stupid fucks. And it's not going to change yeah. it until you do that. <coughs> yeah, I mean, the primary focus of Americans right now should be to turn the House and the Senate on its head. Like, vote them all out. Vote them all out. So let's, let's clean the slate. You know what? If if the people driving the bus can't get you to where you need to go, then you know what? Get a new fucking driver. Like. Word. Word. I, whatever. Anyways, not politics. Let's, let's get into some other shit. Um, I will, I will say. Uh. Just to end on the politics stuff, I'm optimistic that a deal is going to be made 
because it seems like they want to make a deal before the election. But the clock is ticking. And I think Pelosi said they have to do it by like tomorrow if it's going to get done. Yeah, I think her deadline was Wednesday. I think it was by tomorrow night. Um, yeah. Whatever. But I, I mean, I don't, I, from what I read, I don't think the Republicans are on board to like make that happen. I, I, as much as Trump, as much as Trump wants his name on the check, no, and he wants his name on that check. Like I, I dis- look, I, let's I, let, let's be honest. Like the dude, the dude does not give a shit about you. He doesn't. Of course care. not. He does, like so. His bone in this fight is knowing that if to my get, name is on that check, yes, to get his poll numbers up, yes, yeah, but. I feel like despite what McConnell says um, about, you know, like, like they're not like they, they're not going to put something on the floor or whatever, even if Mnuchin and Pelosi agree to it. I think the pressure, because a lot of these guys are fighting for their lives in some of these Senate positions, I think the pressure will be too much for them to stand in the way of it. If the White House and the House of Representatives say we've agreed on a deal and the Senate blocks it, you'll probably see a, a flip of Senate. Of, like that will be the, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back unless yeah. they delay it um, purposely till after the elections, which is a possibility. But in the end, I think some type of stimulus is coming. It's just a matter of when. And that's the that's the worst thing because people people's lives are just being tossed upside down and they just don't give a fuck. But whatever. Let, let's move on. Um, so uh, what's going on with Halloween over or, with you? So now I was just thinking about this the other day and like you know, a lot of places are calling off Halloween. You know, because of the COVID, like these kids, and speaking of just like creative ways, did like do Halloween, and I think we, I think we talked about this a little bit about like the basketball hoop. hoop we came costume. up with we came up with the greatest cost COVID costume ever. But, yeah, but um. Yeah, one of the one of the local like raceways or whatever. Oh, not only They're not only like hold on, trick or treat. Not not only did we come up with the greatest COVID costume for kids ever, we came up with a fun way for adults to enjoy Halloween even more because we get to bounce fucking candies off these little fuckers, like. <laughs> So that was a win-win right there. But go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah. So one of the one of the local raceways is doing a um, like a dry, I guess a drive-by trick-or-treating. So like you know you you drive around and there'd be like you know certain locations where you could stop and get candy or whatever. You know, kids would reach out the window and get candy or whatever. And I was just like, <laughs> see the. The thing is, we could still have Halloween as long as people social distanced and people could just put bowls of fucking candy out outside. Like as, as long as as because uh, I think it's pretty much been proven or fair to say that COVID isn't really transmitted by surfaces as much as people thought it was. That it's more of an aerosol type of, of transmission i know it can still transmit but it's far less likely to um through surfaces than it is through breathing or getting in your eyes or whatever mucous membranes or whatever um so and and you could easily pick you know like one candy out like for example i put a bowl out i just dump the candies in i don't touch any of them right I put the bowl out on the in front of the house. Kids come by, 
they carefully pick a candy, drop it in their bag, right? As long as they're not around other kids, perfectly reasonable way to, to still have Halloween. Yeah, I mean, if your kids... But they won't do it. Them. These little cocksuckers take fucking... They <laughs> fucking handful of cake, Trump style, well, like these fucking well, asshole Trump supporters. They got to get their handful of fucking cake. And this, in, in this instance, they got to get their handful of candy. They can't just be fucking like just normal and, and not be greedy little fucks. And empty your whole bowl in in fucking thirty minutes, little assholes. <laughs> little little Tommy and his He Man Masters of the Universe mask. I mean, you think he would be safe from the fucking COVID? <laughs> if only they did have a, a Masters of the Universe mask, because that would be pretty cool. You know, with the sword and everything, fucking He Man. Fuck yeah, he man was fucking awesome. But I mean, yeah, man, I, I guess, I guess it's kind of like it's sad, man. I, it, it's got to be tough to have small kids right now. Like, I mean, absolutely, absolutely, they can't do anything that they like to do. Or well, you got to think that you got to think Halloween would be like a super spreader event too. Like, there is a potential there, probably. Probably I and, and listen. If 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 I had young kids, my message would be: Listen, guys, this is just a, a. Let's just call this. Let's chalk this year up as like a pause, like a like just it doesn't exist. We can't do everything that we're used to doing. We can't um, play sports like we used to. We can't have halloween we can't do everything the way that we used to because things are fucked up and hopefully god willing or whatever you believe in when we get to uh you know uh, next year uh, probably from what they're saying depending on how rich you are um (laughs) first quarter to third quarter you'll get a vaccine and then we can just go back to the way things were. It's going to take a while. It's going to suck. But this is the way it is. And and as a parent, you can try to come up with other methods to make Halloween cool. And still have them get a bunch of candy and all of that stuff. So maybe you, you do like an Easter egg hunt with candy. Um, in your home or around your house, you know, and, and, and you, you like, just, it makes more sense to do that than to put them at risk. And to that point, there are people out there who are trying to have their kids play sports with masks on and all of this stuff. And to me, it's just like, why are you doing that? I understand you want to give them a sense of normalcy, but it's not normal times. You're putting them at risk. We don't know what this fucking virus can do to them long term if they get it. Even if they're asymptomatic, we don't know. So why would you do that to your kids? I don't understand it. But maybe I'm an idiot. Wouldn't be the first time somebody said I was a fucking idiot. It's not going to be the last. I don't know, you got any more thoughts on Halloween? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think, you know, maybe going back to some traditional Halloween, you know, carve some pumpkins, fucking, you know, buy them some sacks of candy, some shit around the house. Let them, you know, let them buy their costumes, fucking roam around in it all day. Whatever. Yeah. Like, fucking let them be kids, but, you know. Like, like, depending on what their costume is. Okay. Let's role play. You be Black Panther or you be fucking whatever. And I'll be Thanos. You be one of the Avengers. I'll be Thanos. And we fuck around and we run around the house and we, you know, who's going to get more candy? Thanos. Or, like there's just use your imagination. There's ways to like kid. And this is the thing that pisses me off the most. People are always like, oh, what about the kids? What about the kids? Kids adapt way better 
than people give them credit for and way better than adults. Way better than adults. So when I see shit like, oh, my kid, well, it's not going to wear a mask. It's, it's going to be too difficult for them. And all of this stupid shit, kids adapt better than anybody. They are fucking unbelievable when it comes to adapting. And if you don't understand that, then you're a fucking moron. And you don't deserve any Halloween candy. So fuck you. Uh. And it's funny too, because like you see that adjust more like millennials, like for, for example, like the mask thing, millennials, like all they've done is they've embraced it. Like they start designing masks that fit their style and fashion, and like you know, they, you cope with things the way. Well, I, you I, can. I I think you're past millennials, dude. Like you're talking about like like Gen Zers or or whatever yeah, they're called these I days. Guess, yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah. So, anyways, I, I was I was reading this this article, um, <laughs> and I guess this guy was living. This guy Matthew Hammer, um, Reno, Nevada. He was li- at least for a week. He was living in the in the the grocery store stealing a place called uh, Rallies or Rallies or or whatever. And the only reason he got caught was, was because his foot went through the ceiling and the workers that were working overnight or whatever saw his foot go through the ceiling. So they called the cops. The cops sent one of their canines to get him out and the fucking canine got stuck. So they had to get the fire department to get them both out. <laughs> but listen, I am not knocking this guy's hustle because if I, I, it didn't say if he was like homeless or, or, you know, whatever you would think he was, but is that not like the, the ultimate, like, like move to, I don't know, go into the mall and just get lost in the bathroom or whatever, or, or well, Marl's not maybe not that good of a, a comparison because they have the you know they close the stores individually, but like your look Walmart, like if you just kind of get lost in the shuffle, and oh, then like the guy that like the guy that was living in the fucking toilet paper aisle of the Walmart. Yeah. Did you ever- uh, <laughs> Yes. Yes. So so everybody leaves, right? You got the whole fucking store to yourself. You can eat whatever you want. You can, like, tons of games and shit like that. You can set up the fucking basketball. You're shooting hoops in the back, like, riding your bike around, <laughs> riding one of the bikes around the aisles. And, like, it's fucking playland. Like, that, that shit would be sweet. When I worked, when I worked at, at Market Basket in Chelsea, um, I used to work on the weekends and we worked overnight, just not weekends, just one night a week. And we, we changed the displays at the ends of the aisles for the new, you know, sales or whatever. And um, so they would come. Uh, well, we would come in before the store closed. All the managers, all the employees would leave. They'd lock us in the fucking place, which is probably illegal. But they would lock us in the place. And there was maybe, I want to say one, two, three, maybe four of us there. We, I had a fucking boom box. I put the boom box on the fucking PA system. So we'd be listening to Snoop Dogg, doggy style. Like <laughs> We'd have that bumping. Um, and, and we'd be working. We'd, man. Break time came before even break time came. One of us would be prepping the steaks and cooking the steaks in the fucking in the oven that they make the rotisserie chicken. So one of us would be prepping the steaks. Break time came. We ate like fucking kings, dude. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. If if you wanted, because this is you know pre cameras everywhere and all of that stuff. If you wanted, you could walk down. Open up the fucking um, 
free frozen food section door, grab you any ice cream you wanted and just rip open the box and just crush, you know, an ice cream or two. Like it was, it was like that. Nobody gave a fuck. Nobody cared. Like worst came to worst, you, you know, you got rid of the evidence or whatever, but it was fucking awesome, dude. So if I don't hate on this guy one bit, if I had any chance to stay in any type of grocery store or even better a Walmart, like, and some of these Walmarts have, like, major shit. Like, you could, like, like set up a pitching machine and you'd be out there fucking hitting home runs. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be you sweet as some, fuck. You, you need some night air. You fucking go out to the patio section. You yeah. light up a barbecue grill. In the, fucking... in the, in the, the garden <laughs> section, yeah. You go out into the gardens. <laughs> Got your little patio fucking set up. <laughs> you you hook like up one, a little chilly tonight. <laughs> you hook up one of the smokers. <laughs> it's a little chilly tonight. You bust out the little fucking portable fire pit. You, you you hook up the smoker, and you hope nobody notices that it's smoking <laughs> a pork loin or something, so that the next day you can go and get it. I mean, that would be awesome. That, that, if if I was going to do a crime, it would probably be something cool like that. <laughs> you always but, smell nice. Speaking of um, uh, supermarkets, so I went to the Publix and went inside, got whatever I needed, came out. And I was like, like, before I went in the car, before I went into the the supermarket, I saw this chick like wiping down her face. Okay. So she's like in front of me on the other aisle and I could clearly see her car and she's wiping down her face with a wipe or whatever. So I'm like, all right, whatever. She's cleaning her face. So I go in, do my business or whatever. I come out. It wasn't that long, but it was at least a good, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. And I get in the car and now I see her like uh, doing her fucking thing and all this makeup and this and that. And I'm just like, all right, what's going on here? What What is the reason? And I think this was on a Friday night. What is the reason you're in the public's parking lot putting your makeup on? Before club time or whatever. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think was going on in this situation? I mean, maybe she just got off work. She had after plans, meet friends for dinner or something. I don't know. Like Possible. Possible. Like maybe maybe she... Maybe she had a date, like she was home was, for a date. Home was too far, right? Yeah, like, too far to go home and do that stuff. Now, mind you, if I was about to go out on a date, I would schedule the date later so that I could go home and wash my ass and put my best face forward. That's just me. But maybe she gave her maybe so maybe she gave herself a little whore bath at work, you know, freshened up the poopy and all that. Like maybe, maybe. Part of me thinks it was because there's a man at home, and she made plans supposedly to go out with a girlfriend or whoever or wherever. And like we talked about the 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 parking lot rendezvous, I think this was a parking lot um, gussy up. No, a gussy up. <laughs> so she tells baby daddy, "Hey, I'm going out with. Uh, I'm going over to my mom's to do this or that, or I'm going out. I'm going to Keisha's house." Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hang out and play dominoes or whatever. 
So she goes out looking bummy. So baby daddy has no um, qualms or no suspicions because she looks like ass when she leaves the house. Now she gets, she, she's smart enough. She has a little outfit in her purse. She says, I'll dip into the public's parking lot and I'll flip the fucking, the, the eyelashes with the fucking stuff. And I'll, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. She runs into Publix and changes her clothes. Yes. And fucking comes go, out. And she goes and meets fucking Joey. And has a good time with Joey. Could be some sex. Maybe not. I don't know. And then afterwards, she goes back to the Publix parking lot. Or whatever the local par- parking lot is. Wipes all that shit off. Puts her old clothes back on and goes home to hubby. And he's like, eh, how was it, babe? Eh, you know, kind of boring. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's got like a fucking cream pie coming out of her fucking <laughs> sniz. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a cynic. Maybe I'm fucked up. That's just my thoughts. That's what I thought she was doing. Sue me. Um. <laughs> oh, so, so, so here I got one for you. So recently, so recently, this um, this chick um, comes, in, you know, comes and asks if we have you know, cameras at the bar. And I'm like, you know, yeah, I mean, we got cameras, but they're like, she's like, you know, in the parking lot, over the parking lot. I was like, you know, we don't specifically have cameras, you know, over parking spaces in the parking lot. Well, she's uh, she's like, well, you know, my my ex is, you know, slashed my tires. So, you know, she tries to get the police involved, whatever. Come to find out, like, the vehicle's in dude's name. Like, it's his vehicle, it's in his name. So, they're like, you know, sorry, like, if he slashed tires, like, it's his vehicle, he can do whatever he wants. So, uh, I, you know, I happen to see a couple guys come out, <clears throat> and I'm talking to these guys about it, and, you know, one of the guys was like, oh, yeah? He goes, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. He goes, you know, don't say nothing. But uh, we had made the suggestion to him earlier, like, you know, that vehicle's in your name. If you don't want her driving and have another dude in your car, <laughs> slash the tires or something. <laughs> so I was like, damn, like, this dude actually went through with it. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it. So here's my thing. If it's my vehicle, though, like, like, are you going to slash the tires? Or yeah, like, why wouldn't you just, just take pull, your shit back? <laughs> just pull the valve stem or something. Like, No, just take your shit back. Stop being a pussy and get your fucking car back. Like, uh, you would call the cops and say, hey, this bitch won't give me my car keys. Like, what? <laughs> you're going to slash your own. Yeah, You know what? I, I completely go back on that. Fuck that guy. Like, what are you doing, you stupid idiot? Just get your car back. What the fuck? Well, see, I hope that was it, my thing at first. Like, I hope everybody clowns that motherfucker to no end, because well, and that was and that was my thing at first. Like, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, you know, like she, she said she had flat tires, so I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, if you flatten the tires by like pulling out the valve stems, ah, uh, it's kind of funny. Like, brilliant because. You didn't really fuck your shit up. You don't gotta buy new tires, whatever. Like you made her life inconvenient because mm-hmm. she was doing some dirt. But to slash your own shit, like well, it's kind of stupid. Like it's, now you it's gotta ex- buy new tires. It's extremely stupid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> I w- I I don't want to go and get into stereotypes. I don't want to get into stereotypes. But if I had to bet on who that person was going to vote for, <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I, so I read this story about some asshole who went in his basement and he found Twinkies that a box of Twinkies that expired in 2012. Okay, and I. Think he believed that they might still be good. 
I think that was his original thought. So this jerk off opens the box, pulls the Twinkies out. Now, mind you, the expiration was in 2012, eight years ago. But I guess he thinks it's like, you know, you see those stories about a McDonald's burger that's, you know, been survived for 20 years or 30 years or whatever the hell it is. I guess he was thinking along those lines. Hey, they're sealed, you know, in these little uh, plastic pouches and blah, blah, blah. So he pulls them out and one of them has like a big brown stain on <laughs> on the side of it. Another one, um, the cream, I guess, and you could look this up online. The cream, I guess, was like brownish and dried up. And this cocksucker actually had the balls to take a bite out of it, supposedly. Now, he could be telling the truth. He could be lying. I don't know. But is there anything, anything that you would eat that was, we don't even have to go eight years past their expiration date. What's the threshold? Let's let's put it that way. Let let's <laughs> let's say I don't know. As an example, milk supposed to expire by you know two days ago. And you open the fridge, and you grab the milk. It says shit. It's expired two days ago. What do you do? Smell it. You smell it, it could smell okay, but still be expired. Right? Yeah, but yeah. it could. But like, in two days, like, theoretically. Two days, I take the risk. Now, seven days, I'm probably not even going to smell it. I'm going to chunk it because I'm going to assume right. that it's sucking. So, what would you take the risk on? Is there anything that you would take the risk on and how long before that changes? Before before you wouldn't take that risk? Yeah, I mean, Twinkies, I think, have like a, a long-ass fucking lifespan. Like, I think that's why the Bro, dude thought that... One of the Twinkies looked like... I don't know if if it got a hole in it or whatever. One of the Twinkies in the box looked like Swamp Thing. It yeah. was fucking disgusting looking. It looked like this seaweed little cake mess, gross ramen, like this green ramen noodle looking uh, Twinkie that like if that was in the same box, how would you even like? Well, I, here's I, here's my thing. If if the Twinkies expired in two thousand like twelve, they probably were like manufactured in like two thousand and six. Because <laughs> Twinkies have like a, I'm pretty sure they have like a six year lifespan or something like that. I'm not sure about it. Like I know that they are like designed to last a long time. That's why you always see the joke about them for some like. In survival movies about Twinkies yeah. being the only food or whatever. True. But um yeah, I mean, so technically that fucking thing could be like 13, 14 years old. Dude, it's not even that. It's not even that. There was a Twinkie in the box that looked like a mutant Twinkie. Yeah, it, well, I mean, that should have been his sign enough to like, hey, yeah, bro, like, if one of these looks like this, I'm not fucking with any of them. It was pretty scary looking, dude. It was like zombie Twinkie. Like, it was fucking gross. Um, so getting back to the question, I've had like an expired Slim Jim before, for example, and I didn't know it was expired. I just, you know, just... It, open it up and ate it 
and then it was so dry and just fucking tasted like shit that I looked at the at the ex- expiration date and it was like already a couple months past. So um so I finished so I just drank more beer and I finished the Slim Jim. <laughs> but but um I guess like what well and well and the Slim Jim's a little bit different, like because I guess it's like that's just dried out drink. Like it's like jerky, it's like dried out meat. But it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little juicy. When you know you snap into it, you get a little, a little greasy juice. Also, <laughs> but and and it tastes better when it's not fucking a couple months ex- no. like <laughs> past expiration date. Um, but I like think about other foods. Like what? Where is the threshold? Where? Where do we say? Uh, no, I'm not fucking I mean, like. That. I think I've had chocolate that was like three months out of date before. You know, like yeah, but chocolate. Three or four months out of date. I mean, chocolate just like turns white. You open white. it up and the chocolate's all white. Yeah, <laughs> it turns into white chocolate. Like, who gives a fuck? It does. It certainly doesn't taste good, but it. it um, like what? <sighs> Obviously, you're not going to fuck with bread. I mean, you you will fuck with bread as long as you don't see mold. And additionally, even if you do see mold, if you're in a desperate situation, you might just cut that piece off. <laughs> the, the, the fucked up thing is, like, the moment you actually see mold on bread, like, does it, like if you don't see mold on the rest of bread, doesn't mean there isn't mold. Like, true. <laughs> Mold has to like bloom for you yeah. to be visible. So if it's gotten to that point, there's a lot of mold. There's, there's mold like all but through I, that fucking. Trip. I don't see it. So, I, hey, I'm ignorant, bro. The, the trick is you fucking pull the green part off and then toast it, like, or <laughs> just in case it's a little mushy, like, or or you just get rid of that slice and now you've you've removed the contaminant and now the rest of it's good. It's like I removed the infected slice of bread, so the rest of my loaf is golden. I just got to put it in the fridge now so that it doesn't get all moldy. Um, but like, all right, so a lot of people have like a, a what would you say is the, um, what is the, What is the line for how long you can store leftovers and still eat them? I think after three days, like I won't fuck with something that's like after three days. Three days? That's it? Yeah. Yeah, if it's refrigerated, three days. I mean, to me, it depends on how good of a refrigerator you have. If you got a refrigerator that is almost like a freezer. I go a week, dude. Like, <laughs> because in my mind, in my mind, when I warm that shit up, if there is any bacteria or anything, it's just gonna nuke the fuck out of it. So I'm good. Like, so what? I mean, dead bacteria. It's fucking dead. Who cares? There's <laughs> still some good meat in this fucking plate. I've probably gone, if I'm being honest, a week and a half. <laughs> well, and I mean, there's like, but here's the thing. There's some shit like you might go three or four days, like pizza, like whatever, like fucking boxed pizza, like, you know, three or four days. If it lasts that long, you might, you might eat pizza, but speaking like, of dinner, speaking of pizza. Um, a lot of people just throw the box in the fridge and it's the, probably the worst thing you can do because this, the box does not protect it from all the air. So you, you throw it in there the next day, it looks like a shriveled up fucking ball sack. Like you stupid idiots. Take the time. God damn it. Uh, wh- why do I have, wh- why is it my, 
I, you motherfuckers should be paying me to drop this knowledge on you stupid assholes who are out there putting your fucking pizza boxes just with the pizza in the box in the fridge. All right, listen to me, you stupid fucks. You stupid assholes, okay, that are eating shitty, shriveled up Golden Girls pussy pizza, okay? Take two seconds. Buy yourself a box of fucking Ziploc bags, okay? Ziploc bags are there for a reason. They keep the air out, you fuckheads. The air is what fucks with your shit. So you have a delicious slice of pizza. You have a delicious slice of pizza. Or a couple slices left over. Sometimes a half a pizza left over. Shovel that shit into a fucking Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge. Guess what? It's going to be not the same, but close to it the next day or even two days later. You put that shit in the fridge in a box, you might as well go eat fucking B. Arthur's pussy the next day. Because that that's, that's basically what you're doing to your pizza. It's a shriveled up old lady's cunt. Okay? Fucking smarten up, you stupid bastards. Jesus Christ. Am I wrong? Oh, I got the image of B. Arthur snizzing. Like, uh. <laughs> oh, it could have been uh. worse. Could have been, uh, what's her name there? Uh, the older chick. Fuck, I can't remember her name. The, <laughs> the, the B. Arthur's Sophia. mother in, in the Golden Girls. Yeah, Sophia. <laughs> Could have been her sniff. Blanche, Blanche, Blanche. Think about right. Blanche. Blanche, Blanche. <laughs> oh, Blanche was the hot one? <laughs> bring, bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> Blanche's pussy was just as fucking raggedy as those other ones. <laughs> Blanche probably had the most raggedy of the pussy because she real. gave it up she, to she, everyone. And it's crazy that we actually know this because <laughs> what the fuck were we doing watching Golden Girls? You, you know what the golden sniz? You know the golden sniz? Betty White's character. Well, she's the, is she like the only one left? She, she might Maybe. be the only one left. But I mean, legitimately though, like she she had her character in the show had the golden sniz. Like she'd only been with like one dude. So. I forgot about that. But and she's also <laughs> she's also still putting in work at her age. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe she put that pussy in the fucking Ziploc bag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is what we do for you guys. This is what we provide. We provide a service for you. We've given you life hacks. We've given you fucking sweet inventions. We've given you tips left and right. When we're not going on and on about stupid ass politics and cunts who don't wear masks we serve the community and my public service announcement this week is to spend three dollars on some fucking ziploc bags so that your pizza doesn't turn into golden girls pussy that's all pretty simple stays moist it stays juicy it stays full and and (laughs) It stays fluffy and, and, and I mean, dude, come on. You, you've seen this. You put a pizza, you eat it, you grab the pizza. It's fucking full of flavor. It's full of grease and life. And, and it's just cheesy and you, and you're, and, and you enjoy it. And, and it's awesome. And then you, you like, you're a lazy fuck. So you're like, all right, I already had four slices and you just throw the rest in the fridge in the goddamn box and the next day, you go and you pull it out of the fridge, and it looks like fucking Sophia's asshole. Like <laughs> it's it's as, it's as hard as the cardboard that's fucking. Like what happened to my pizza? Containing it. It looked so fucking awesome yesterday. No, it looks like fucking like a like a, a eight year old Twinkie. Like <laughs> what are we doing here? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know, man. (sighs) 
That's it. That's all I got. You got anything else? No, I think that's it for this week. All right. Well, if you're eating Golden Girls pizza tomorrow, I I I would eat it too. I'm I'm not saying I'm above it. I'm not saying I am above Blanche's Pussy's Pizza. But I'm giving you the avenue to have uh, who, who's the one that had the golden pussy? Uh, fuck. Uh, Betty White's character. What was her name? Um, shit. Didn't you say it earlier? No, nah, it was um, Rose. Rose. All right, there you go. You want some Rose pussy pizza? <laughs> it's the best in, the best it's a fucking some, some, some fucking Ziploc bags they have great value Walmart they have fucking generic ones they work just as good get you Rose's golden pussy pizza it's worth it All right. This, you got anything else? This this has been a random Richard's PSA. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>